I am Reverend Irene Smith, a.k.a. Miss Irene for my young peeps. I am the Bible study teacher, and I welcome you to Generationally Speaking, the 21st Century Bible Study. Join me each week at the table with my cohorts from Gen X, Gen Ys, and praise God, <laughs> Pastor Jordan. <laughs> Gen Z. Gen Z. <laughs> uh, join us each week as we discuss life victories and struggles and the issues of life. We all face no matter the age with uh, understanding the Bible, the scripture as our final word. My co-host today, uh, always uh, Minister James Durham. How's everyone? A Dallas Cowboy fan. I was That's waiting me. for you to say it. That's me. <laughs> Um, Minister Durham um, is a mentor to uh, young boys and men and youth uh, in the church and outside of the church, empowering them with his teaching, um, uh, especially with that from a Nehemiah's perspective. And I just believe that one day that I'm going to read your book, uh, having possessing that Nehemiah spirit and hear more about that conference for young men and young um uh, boys to come to. I'm, I'm excited about looking. I'm, I'm, right. I'm waiting for that. All right. And then I also have uh, the one and only Shamika Latte Oliver. Come on, let's keep it starting today. <laughs> I'm ready. The root coach. <laughs> and her mantra is building the best you. Absolutely. And then I have two special guests. One, um, Ebony Harley. And Ebony, I've known Ebony since she was, can I say, a little girl? I mean, a little girl. <laughs> And today I'm excited to say that she is a recent graduate of Towson University where she graduates, uh, where she graduated with an, uh, her undergraduate degree in cultural studies. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Thank you. So happy to have you today. Happy to be here. And then um, Ebony uh, said, hey, I got a friend and mm -hmm. I know that he would be an excellent uh, resource and an asset at the table. And so she was able to talk him into coming, uh, mm -hmm. Jordan Lean, a.k.a. Pastor Jordan. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. And I think uh, uh, Minister Durham wants to ask Pastor Jordan the question. Yes, why do your peers call you Pastor Jordan? Well, I'm a graduate of Towson University. Um, just graduated this past December with a degree, um, a Bachelor's of Arts in Religious Studies. Um, so I guess I got that name like around two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I just think maybe because I was one of the only, the most sanctified person on campus. <laughs> it, it, it being a PWI, there aren't many of us there. But also because I just, um, I kind of led with love and I, let, I led with realness. Being on a college campus, you can't just go throwing um, Bible scriptures at students because Ooh. that's not what they're not, they're not going to relate with that. I lead with love, I lead with relationship. I don't force you to go to church. I, I I want you to pray first, talk to him, and then if you want to go to church with me on Sunday, I'll pull up and, and we can go. You used the term, and I'd like for you to uh, tell our audience what that means, and I think mm -hmm. you said PWI. Yeah, PWI. a predominantly white institution. Um, so we have your HBCUs, and then you have your PWIs. We attended a PWI. I'm grateful for the experience that I got at that PWI. Um, you know, I, I would look on TV and I would love to watch our marching band play Total Praise, but they didn't have the capacity. So <laughs> I'm grateful for the Britney Spears and the um, share of songs that we got. Oh, a little jealous, wait a minute, he is absolutely funny. <laughs> <laughs> we caught it all. <laughs> so uh, praise uh, God. Today we're going to be talking about culture in the church. Mm -hmm. Culture in the church. Uh, what we know is that uh, culture in the church is not new. There's always been uh, these, um, well, culture clashes in the church is not new. There's always been conversations about preaching and music, who can preach, who can't preach, who can be ordained, who can't, women's role in the church, sex uh, uh, and your know, sexuality. And we know that the church continues to undergo transformations in its worship experiences. And so when I meet, when I uh, shared, when I was speaking with um, these two young uh, individuals, these two persons, um, I wanted to talk to them about culture. And uh, when we were off camera, uh, Ebony was talking to us about her experiences in um, the PWI church. <laughs> predominantly white, <laughs> <laughs> and the African American church. So, uh, share with us, share with the audience just a little bit about your experience the, between the two. 
Okay. Well, of course, I grew up in the black church. Uh, me, my sisters, my mother and grandmother went to a went to black churches since we were younger. Um, after my grandmother passed, our mother decided she wanted to explore her relationship with God once again. You know, death makes you think about higher beings, think, think about God, why would you let them take away my family members? So she started to explore her own ideas about religion and introduced us to the Jehovah Witness religion. We were able to attend a lot of their services. I actually learned from a Jehovah Witness when we were, I want to say in high school, and then we went back to the church that we attended as kids. And then ever since then, we just started to question religion, question not is, is there a God, but how we wanted to serve God, what we believed in terms of the Bible, what we believed in terms of spirituality, how we wanted to become higher beings in terms of if we wanted a religion or if we just wanted to maybe practice some sort of spirituality in terms of what we wanted to do, how we wanted to do it. And so recently our mother brought us back to church and we attended a predominantly white church. The pastor is white. Um, he also has like co-pastors who are people of color as well. And my experience with that is their music especially is different because mm -hmm. the black church is about you know, in my opinion, it's more of a show. So it's a lot of worship, worshiping God, worshiping the Lord. You have about like songs that you sing, then they ask for tides, then they sing a song while you're giving the tides. And then you sing another song before the pastor actually starts to preach. And then after that, another song is sang. So it's just a lot of singing, a lot of praising, which is not bad. However, the songs are just, it's just a lot of, it's more like a concert in a sense. So everyone's dancing after their seats. They're like, yes, praise, praise the Lord, hallelujah. You know, some people are dancing in the aisles. While at the white church, it was more of a soulful singing. You have the guitar, you have the keyboard, you have people, multiple people on stage singing, harmonizing. You have the lyrics on the stage and you just hear the rawness of the songs, the singing, and then the pastor preaches then you may sing a song after that and it's just have a great day enjoy your day and you leave the church it's not as much of a hallelujah place the lord yes Woo! in between like the preaching which depending on what type of church you like to go to you want people to be engaged however it's not as much of a distraction of people you know interrupting the pastor in a sense so i like that about this particular church they were going to, I like the songs. They're a little bit more modern, things you can hear on the radio or listen to while you're going to work or driving. And you don't have to worry about someone else just coming up and starting to sing it. And then it starts the whole entire scene. It's just like, I can be with God on my own by myself. It doesn't have to cause people to invite themselves into my own personal worship. So what about the off off offering portion of that, the difference in that? So at this church particularly, they did have like a 20 minute spill about what they're gonna do with the money, how much they need per person. If a certain amount of people give this amount, they can be struggled by this. And the way that they placed it did throw me off a little from the sermon, cause I was here. I was like, yes, I understand. He related the Super Bowl prior to it actually went because it was what last Sunday and I was like wow that's a great analogy I really like that in terms of Jesus and how if you run the play a different way people are going to see it a different way and I was like okay I like that cool and then started preaching about money and tithes and how this is going to help this and of course that's a great program they're help they're trying to help people in the community which is great they were trying to build a restoration house for women who are going through homelessness, abusiveness, things like that, which I loved. I was like, oh, I haven't been to too many churches where they talk about building homes for things like that. It's like, we're donating, we're doing a food drive. However, we're not actually trying to build a place for these women and we're not gonna 
we're going to spread the, the word, but we're not going to force them to have to be a believer of Jesus in order to be in this house. So that was great. And then start talking about the tides for it, which kind of brought me back to like why I particularly am questionable about some churches, especially like the black church, because a lot of them it's okay, this is Jesus said to give, so we're supposed to give. But then if that's the case, why do you have programs where people can take like 10% out of their paychecks and then in order to be a member, you have to pay a certain amount of tithes for this. So that's like one of the big things and questions I have in terms of churches and religions. Like, okay, we're here to serve the Lord. When I ask about money and you're putting in people's income and things like that, you can give in other ways. Okay, I'm gonna ask Pastor Jordan. Uh, that I know that he's in a mainstream African American church. So hearing your peers say that, what what comes to your mind? What is your response to what she's saying? I think um hmm. so when it comes to tithes and offerings, that we I feel like for the church, people tend to forget that we also have to keep the lights on. We also have to um we have a water bill, a light bill. We have to, um, depending on what church you go to, our pastor gets a salary. Um, and I think that people tend to forget that the church has to go through the same struggles that a regular business has to go to go through. It may be um, recognized as a tax-free um, business, but we still have bills. We still have to keep the lights on. Um, you, they're, they're building the restoration building, but they have to have the funds to, um, to build it. And without mm -hmm. those funds, they, it won't happen. Um, I do think that as it pertains to the black church, we're supporting our church. And we're not able to go out into the, um, our local grant writing place and apply for a grant. And they have um, Pastor Ethan come in and he can talk <laughs> and get the, the grant. But when Pastor Roderick from some, something Baptist church goes in, I was like, oh, well, we don't have any money left. So the black people were the only people given to the black church. Right. So we have to, if we're not going to get it from our members, it really was not coming from anywhere else. So I, I think that's, um, that's how it was then. I'm saying now it's a little bit different because, you know, you have mega churches, which are predominantly like community supports, it's community supported. So it's a little different now. But in the beginning, I think that black people were supporting the black church financially and it wasn't coming from nowhere else. Okay. All right, Minister Durham, you heard her talk about the music and uh, that um, it seemed like a performance mm -hmm. at, at one church and worship at, a, at another. Would you speak to that? Well, well, I wanted to follow that up with the okay. question because <clears throat> you said the black church is more like a show. Did you mean just because it's so many songs and it's more like a concert is to use your word or do you think that what you saw because you also say praise the Lord hallelujah do you think it's inauthentic I think it can be inauthentic and a lot of times I'm not saying I don't believe in people catching like the Holy Ghost or things like that but I feel like a lot of people they want to put on the performance in the show that they go to church and they're Christians, and they buy by the Bible, but are the same people who throughout the week can be sinful individuals. So they're trying to appeal to the crowd, the people around them by saying, oh, hallelujah, praise the Lord. And then they've seen that so growing up and throughout their lives that they think that for them to actually receive the word, maybe sometimes they have to say that out loud in the role of people to make it seem like they're get receiving what the word is going to be mm -hmm. and they're going to leave the church a changed person right. instead of, right. you know. So we're talking about culture and, and culture clashes or what have you. So culture pr pretty much in the black church, we are generally, not everyone, but we are an expressive people. We, we like to express ourselves and church is about connection and we've talked about this in a previous show it's about connecting with God and a lot of people when they connect with the God they they get 
overwhelmed with emotion and so you will see that manifest itself in crying maybe get on their knees and, and worship wave hands they become overwhelmed with the emotion like excitement like I, i'm just so excited i can't believe you know almost lost my life but i'm still here so i'm gonna celebrate and depending on my personality i might celebrate with the dance mm -hmm. or what have you and then we expressive like in the black church we like to talk back to the preacher <laughs> to, say, <laughs> to say amen say it reverend <laughs> you on it, you know, you're giving me life right now, I'm feeling it, it's just an energy, and like, oh, I cannot remember who is the author, but there's a book on preaching and the relationship between the preacher and the congregation called The Hum, mm -hmm. and you hit a certain rhythm, and when you speak, you're moving together, you and the congregation become like one, and so you, you speak, and then they, it's a call and response, and it's just the culture. And as we also said on the previous show, every church is not for every person. Mm -hmm. Like every church should not be the same. Even if we're talking all black churches, and all black churches should not be the same mm -hmm. because we're not a monolithic people. We all have different personalities. We think differently. We express ourselves differently. So it could be a church maybe they have in a high church and they don't say talk to the preachers. <laughs> so they just sit and they say hallelujah and amen in their head. So mm -hmm. they, I'm worshiping in my head. I'm praising in my head. But then there's another church where and they want you to touch their heart. They want to hear illustrations. They want to hear stories. They want to laugh. It's just a different way of expressing. And really, as believers, we have to find the, the church that, that fits our personality and fits our lifestyle and what we're looking for. And whatever connects with us, I say you connect yourself with that branch of Zion. Yeah, and um, Shamika, I, I know that you are a, a worshiper. So when you hear this, this when she speaks about worship and praise, this this uh, outward expression of like praise the Lord and fall into the knees and running around. And what what do you say to our to to this generation? Because there are lots of people who feel that same way about this worship and praise experience. Well, honey, <laughs> I have done it all. Okay, I have. I I remember starting off in church and I would just see people raise their hand like this and I'm like I remember what I went through and I'm like what I was going through at the time I'm like I just want to do it for me it was freedom for me it was I don't I wanted to get to a place where I didn't care what people said about me if I was to get up and shout and run across I needed that freedom for myself and then I've been in churches where it's just like um or a predominantly white church and it was very quiet and I had to get used to it, but then I found a way to worship God. I found a way to that pure worship is what I would call it. Because in um, the black church or um, it was a, the, the music was there, I could relate to it. I could relate to it and I could relate to the other part of, you know, of the worship. I would say, just as James said, <coughs> find your place, you know, and then find a place where you can welcome both. Because God is in both of them. You know, when you need that time of your breakthrough, or like you with your girls, some sometimes you just want to be quiet, like, right? <laughs> hey girl, I'm just here to listen. I just I just need that part in. And then sometimes you're like, I got something I need to say, <laughs> girl, and this, this, and that. I, I say welcome both of them and in, and experience God in both of them and allow him to to use you in that in that place. Cause for, for both of them for me it's like freedom. And sometimes I need quiet. And sometimes I need loud. Child, give it to me, you know? <laughs> and, and can I just jump on that? Yeah. There's n no one right way yeah. or no one way of doing church that God is only in that church. Yeah. God is in white churches. He's in black churches. Yeah. He's in, you know, expressive churches. He's in quiet churches. He's in it all. And so find the one yeah. that fits you. And with, wait a minute, and, and with knowing how to do all the shout. So I shout like a quote unquote, and I love all my peoples, but I shout like a white, I get white girl. I don't have no rhythm. That's I don't, I don't, I, it, it, I just, That's I don't have the, you know, the two step. You know, and, and I have rhythm, right? <laughs> but when it comes to that, it's just all the over the place. Woo, hallelujah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but yes, I, um, I was in a church one time and I'm just, it was just so quiet. And the pastor's preacher, he was, oh, I mean, he's a teacher. I was just a little bit afraid to be like, Laura, you know, I would have been, 
moving, but you know, so you you find a way to have temperance, you know, mm -hmm. self control, and just keep it calm and shout on the inside. <laughs> Pastor <laughs> Jordan, or oh, just go to parking lot, right? Uh, <laughs> Pastor or just Jordan. be like David and give an undignified yeah. praise, no matter who's around you. Yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Pastor Jordan, what what do you have to say about this this uh, praise and worship? So, um, when I show my friends, cause they're gonna be like, oh. Yeah, we remember. <laughs> but for me, praise, the, my style of praising has changed um, over the years. I think that it, the way that I praised, because I was born Baptist. Okay. And I, <laughs> and I attended a, um, a Baptist fit church. That was the type of church that my grandmother raised me. If you know what a Baptist mm -hmm. fit is. Well, say that just in case the viewer and well, um, audience Well, this is a very non-scholarly definition. But a Baptist fit necessarily is just, you know, when someone's just... The uncontrollable shout. Okay. Mm -hmm. You try to just make sure they don't hurt themselves. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's essentially what a Baptist fit is. And I grew up in that type of church. And I feel like that was the, the start of how I praised God. It was a Baptist fit. And, and when I look back at that time, I was going through a lot of things in life. And I feel like my praise was just a representation of what God was bringing me through. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother and my friends would be like, yeah. He's purging you of something mm -hmm. because you can see it. Because don't nobody, yeah, we they just move like they used to just move furniture out the way, mm -hmm. like just just don't hurt him, himself and, and and others. But now it's a little bit more controlled. I'm um, a little bit more, and um, a little bit more. I don't I don't, don't want to say reserved, but um, I know what God has done for me, so I take praise very seriously. And I know that my praise is not going to be the same as the person standing next to me. Um, just to like a little backstory or a funny story about this, I I used to attend the Hamptons Ministers Conference, and every year we have the concert. And at the concert, there's probably a praise break every other year. But there's one woman on the stage, um, <laughs> Dr. D Diane Clayton. She is a worshiper. We'll be just cutting loose. Like, we will be running, stepping, shouting, and she will just be standing there with her long white dress with her arms raised. No matter what, how many BPMs mm. we're going per, mm. we got going, she's worshiping. And that's her style. So I think when, when I think of that, I think um, you don't have to conform to what others are doing around you. If your style of worship and praise is just raising your hands and telling God, thank you, it doesn't matter if I'm falling over the pews. If that's your worship, me falling over the pews is my worship. You just raising your hands is yours. We don't have to be the same because God gets the glory regardless. Right. And I, 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 I love all these perspectives. And I love hearing you talk about, wow, you know, um, I'm having my worship experience. And I, I like my, my worship experience to be a little more subdued. And I think that's, that's a great thing that Pastor Jordan and everyone else is saying that you're finding your place, that, that church, that praise and worship for you. But as you grow and mature, you'll find that there will be times when you will unknowingly, <laughs> unexpectedly be open your mouth and start <laughs> screaming. You'll wonder, who is that? Uh, and I think that uh, Minister Durham brought it up, that uh, African-Americans, because of our experience, you know, maybe so much, not so much now, but because of what we experience, that's, that's that tradition that you hear this call and this response. That's our tradition of raising our hands. It was the one place where we had freedom. It was the one place where we, we, could, we could release mm -hmm. all of our emotions. It was the, the, the black church. And so this releasing, releasing of emotions has just uh, gone down through the generations. Mm -hmm. This release, when I come to the church, I release. I always tell people, when I come to the church, you know, it's good to see you, but I ain't coming for you. Right. You might think I am, but I'm not coming to see you. I'm coming because I know that I want to give God the praise and the glory. And because of the hell that I've been through, mm -hmm. excuse me, but you might want to give me a little space because I'm just going to run. I'm going to shout. But when I go to the other churches, you know, maybe they not had those experiences. And so maybe they don't have that energy of release that I might have. But then I'm telling you, there are some Pentecostals, uh, 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 Caucasians. And if you've ever gone to their service now, they, they get it on. They, they really do. And I know this one group, they believe in, in snake handling 
and that's a part of their worship. So you know, every church, you know, like there's a flavor for, for everybody. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm thankful. We're going to continue this conversation because <laughs> yes, it is yes. so good. We haven't even begun to touch the surface of all that we want to talk about. So I'm going to ask Pastor Jordan and, and my um, uh, Ebony to come back and, of course, my uh, two co-hosts that, that we can just continue this conversation. Is that all right with you yes, all? Is that okay? Yes. All right, all right. So I'm excited about that. So I'll leave you with um, these three Bs. Be inspired, dare to dream, mm. dare to believe, uh, be informed by the word of God, and then be transformed by the renewing of your mind through Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 Wow, we just didn't even get a chance to get into right. everything. That's okay. We're going to see you next time. <laughs> yes, yes. We're going to continue this uh, conversation and hear more about uh, the, the culture and uh, talk more about uh, this um, this worship experience that you're going through and finding the, just the right church because I don't think you found it yet. I think you're just on your way. Mm, yes, it is. And I've I've heard I've had friends who've gone to various churches and only to find themselves coming back to the community mm. because I tried it. I did this, I, but it was something that was I was missing. It was some, and I think it's that culture. I think so, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. All righty. Thanks, everybody. Yes. Durham, what you got to say? Oh, we'll, we'll catch it on the next time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next time. That's what I have to say. We'll see you next time. And, and for those of you who will join us on FaceTime Live, uh, Facebook Live, I'm going to face Facebook Live, hey, you know, we're going to do it again. Mm -hmm. We're going to do it again. We're going to do it again. Facebook Live, we're going to do it again. All right. Praise be to God.